Tyrannosaurus rex was a truly incredible animal, a formidable predator quite unlike any other that's existed on Earth. There's a reason this dinosaur is known the world over and is considered the king of the tyrant reptiles. Every year, numerous scientific studies are published about this awe-inspiring species, and we learn more and more about its anatomy, habits, and evolution. T-Rex was also a giant, among the biggest theropod dinosaurs to have ever lived, with specimens such as the one nicknamed Scotty potentially achieving weights of up to 8.8 .8 metric tons and lengths of more than 12 meters, or about 40 feet. Another contender for the largest Tyrannosaurus specimen is Sue, the most complete known T-Rex skeleton, on display at the Field Museum in Chicago. This specimen is in a similar size range as Scotty, at just over 12 meters in length, and with a body weight ranging from around 8.4 to possibly 9.1 metric tons. Some much more incomplete and unpublished specimens of Tyrannosaurus are also known, which have been claimed to be even larger than Scotty and Sue. These include the specimen known as Bertha, known from a single partial leg represented by a tibia, a fibula, and a femur. This giant was uncovered in the 1980s and apparently has an extraordinarily thick femur, with a girth even greater than that of the same bone in Sue. Another partial skeleton that's in the running for the biggest ever T-Rex is the specimen known as E.D. Cope. This specimen was uncovered in 1999 and has a femur circumference that again exceeds Scotty and Sue's, although the bone is shorter in length. However, the tibia, one of the lower leg bones, is far longer than in these other rexes. Calculating the body mass of this individual by scaling up from other more complete specimens has yielded results between 11 to 12 metric tons, significantly greater than the estimates for Scotty and Sue. E.D. Cope is also particularly interesting for the unusual proportions of its leg, and this specimen has been discussed at length in several videos by The Vividen. I'll link to them in the description below, I'd highly recommend watching these for some fantastic in-depth examinations of the different mass estimates. But now, yet another tantalizing hint of a truly gigantic Tyrannosaurus Rex has been revealed, and this one might really be the biggest one found so far. Meet Goliath. A Tyrannosaurus rex femur unearthed in September of 2024 in South Dakota. This specimen really is worthy of its name. Only the single left femur has been found, but it is absolutely enormous. Goliath became known to the world when it was displayed by the Black Hills Institute at the recent Tucson Gem and Mineral Show. Along with photos posted online, a length and circumference measurement of the bone were also released. Displayed next to the measurements of the specimens Sue, Stan, Scotty, and E.D. Cope. And, well, as you can see, Goliath's bone was shown to be significantly larger in both length and robustness. However, as reported by the Vividen, who reached out to paleontologist Pete Larson of the Black Hills Institute for clarification, it turns out that the length measurement for Goliath was taken from different points on the bone compared to the others listed here. Whereas the other specimens had been measured from the greater trochanter to the lateral condyle, essentially down the outer edge of the bone, Goliath was measured from the femoral head to the medial condyle, the inner edge. This was done because the greater trochanter of Goliath has been damaged, so going from the femoral head gives a more reliable measurement. The femoral head and the medial condyle have also both been weathered slightly, so in fact, it originally would have measured a few extra centimetres. The Vividen also further confirmed Goliath's dimensions by asking Dr. Brian Curtis of Fossil Crates to take more measurements, and sure enough, they were verified. But this does mean the length comparison provided online is slightly misleading since the measurements for Sue, Stan, Scotty, and Cope are taken from the other edge of the bone compared to Goliath, and this edge is slightly shorter, as the greater trochanter doesn't extend quite as far up as the femoral head does. So, measuring Sue and Scotty from the femoral head to the medial condyle as well, this results in a length for Sue's femur of 136.6 cm, and Scotty's at 134 cm. But, if we then consider that Goliath is missing those extra centimetres due to the weathered ends of the bone, a maximum length of between 139.1 and 141.1 centimetres can be safely assumed for this specimen. So, whichever way it's measured, Goliath certainly seems to be longer than these other Tyrannosaurus specimens. Plus, the circumference of the femur was measured from the standard location across all specimens, so it's definitely the largest in terms of robustness, with a girth even greater than Cope. So just what does all this mean in terms of body mass estimations for these Tyrannosaurs? It means that Goliath is, well, a Goliath. 
Estimating this T-Rex's mass based on an equation that uses femur circumference results in a conservative mass of about 11.4 tons, compared to Sue and Scotty's 8.8 tons and Cope's 10.7 tons using this same technique. But then, utilizing a different method which takes the volume of the femur into account, estimates in the range of 12.3 to 12.9 tons are produced. Again, be sure to watch the Vividens videos on Goliath for an in-depth explanation of the calculations done to reach these values. If these upper mass estimates really are accurate, then Goliath wouldn't just be the most massive T-Rex ever found, but also quite possibly the biggest theropod dinosaur discovered so far. An estimated 13.1 meters in total length has also been calculated for Goliath based on scaling up from Sue. Of course, it's also important to keep in mind that Goliath is only known from this isolated femur, so it makes calculating the mass and length of the entire body much less reliable than if we had a complete skeleton. Still, it's rather insane to think that such a huge apex carnivore might once have been stalking prehistoric North America. Equipped with formidable adaptations for locating prey and crushing the bones of its victims, there really was nothing else quite like Tyrannosaurus rex in the history of life on planet Earth. It's worth also mentioning here that a study published in July of 2024 proposed that, hypothetically, T-Rex could have grown to even bigger sizes. They suggest that the absolute largest individual Tyrannosaurus that ever lived might well have been capable of achieving 15 tons in mass, and possibly even more than 15 meters in length. This study does state that we are very, very unlikely to ever find such an individual though. The chances of a T-Rex individual in the 99.99th percentile in terms of size being fossilized and found are so vastly improbable that we'll almost certainly never come across such an exceptional rex. But among the total number of Tyrannosaurus individuals that ever existed on the planet, there surely would have been a few that stood in a league of their own above all others, just as we see with some abnormally giant modern animals. So Goliath might very well be an example of a truly extraordinary T-Rex, and it shows that no matter what, there'll always be a bigger fish. There's obviously a lot more that could be said about this spectacular new fossil discovery, but the aim of this video was just to be a concise summary of Goliath and the implications this specimen has for our understanding of just how giant Tyrannosaurus really could get. For some much more in-depth exploration of this incredible dinosaur, and of other enormous megatheropods, do be sure to check out the Vividens videos on the topic, which are linked below. Also, I'd like to say a big thank you to PaleoNerd01 for providing this fantastic size comparison of Goliath and Sue. You can find them on Instagram and DeviantArt, where they make some brilliant reconstructions of various extinct animals. They'll be linked below as well. I really hope you enjoyed this 7 Days of Science special feature. If you like what we do here, then you can support us on Patreon, where you can also get early access to the science news we cover every week, plus bonus content including our monthly presenter discussions about our favourite recent science stories. Be sure to follow 7 Days of Science on Instagram too. That's all for now, see you next time.